The second of big board uh, getting closer to the unchanged line. We were up big, down big, and now we're clawing back. By the way, S&P and NASDAQ are back in the green. Disappointing sales in O'Reilly Automotive. Those shares now at the lowest level in nearly two and a half years. Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, and Genuine also down for the ride as well. Democrat Congresswoman Maxine Waters ripping into Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson in a recent speech saying, quote, Ben Carson knows nothing about the mission of HUD. He doesn't care about people in public housing. He believes that if you are poor, it is your own fault. And if he thinks when he comes before my committee, I'm going to give him a pass, mm. I'm going to take I'm going to take his blank apart. <laughs> Here now to uh, discuss Fox News contributor DeRoy Murdoch. All right, uh, fighting words there. Well, I'd expect that out of Maxine Waters. Uh, I don't think she's ever going to say anything nice about anybody who works for Donald Trump, so that shouldn't be any big, any big shock. Yeah, it's, it's not a big shock, perhaps, but the tone is really amazing, particularly in light of everything that's been going on. Uh, and Representative Scalise still in the hospital and the, the sort of notion of kumbaya. Oh, yeah. But but Dr. Ben Carson is saying that he wants to change the sort of birth, cradle to grave uh, welfare state that many people find themselves in generation after generation. An essential part of it will be his platform at, at HUD. What's wrong with that? Uh, nothing's wrong with that. What it does is addresses the Democrats' model, which is basically tax and spend and elect. You know, you take money from people uh, in taxes, you spend it on people, and hopefully they're grateful and they turn around and reelect you. And this is kind of the Democrat mm. model and has been for years. And of course, Maxine Waters and her colleagues see that as a big threat to their, their business model. So of course she's going to squeal. Much better is the idea that if people get, uh, get better in an improving, improving economy, you give them an opportunity to get off of welfare and be self-dependent. When someone is honest about uh, some of the lures of welfare and, and, and some of the reasons it's tough to get off, they're, they're portrayed by the mainstream media and, and Democrats as, as being heartless, uh, which is, of course, a part of her comments. Do you think Ben Carson's the kind of person? I think so, but I'm, I'm curious what you think in terms of he doesn't care. You know, he's going to try to be honest about this the best way he can because he grew up in, in, in a certain state level of poverty, and, but his mother and his education got him out of it. Yeah, I think uh, talking about opportunities people have to educate themselves, I think school choice ties in very much with this whole discussion of public benefits. If uh, kids can get well educated, they can get out of that system and, and actually prosper. If they don't, they probably stay there. And I think public welfare and benefits should be there for people who cannot take care of themselves. And the more we spend on everybody, the less attention those truly needy people get. And uh, there have been efforts to get people on food stamps, uh, off of food stamps with wel welfare requirements. Uh, that gets people who are able to take care of themselves back in the workforce and people who are at home disabled and, and sick and, and uh, injured, whatever, right. and can't work, then we can pay attention to those people fact, who really can't take care of themselves. In fact, speaking of which, uh, the next topic is that the number of people on food stamps actually has plummeted, we know, in four states uh, because they had, uh, well, they restored their work requirements. In Alabama, for instance, the number of recipients down 85% underscoring what you're talking about here. I was struck by this uh, recent report on, on uh, food stamp requirements that able-bodied people who can take care of themselves get off of food stamps and go to work. Not just down 5 or 10 percent, but you say 85 percent down in Alabama, down 62 percent in Georgia, 75 percent in Kansas. So this is very, very dramatic. So this illustrates how many more people are on public relief who really shouldn't be. Now the economy has picked up some. And a similar situation when Rudy Giuliani was mayor uh, here in New York, uh, he had a requirement, which was if you want to get welfare benefits, you have to come in for fingerprints. And what they discovered is a lot of people ran because they figured, okay, we want to be fingerprinted and, and demonstrate that they were collecting in New York City and New Jersey and Connecticut. These people were triple dipping. And I think rather than get caught and go to jail, they thought, well, you know, we've had a good run. Let's just disappear quietly into the night. And the reduction in, in welfare under uh, Giuliani is 58%. Again, a very wow. large number. So, again, it, it gets back to the point that we probably have made a huge mistake in this country paying people not to work. And, and you, you got to wonder if we were to rescind some of these things and, or, and take a harder line, it would help also with the illegal immigration situation. I mean, there wouldn't be jobs waiting for illegal immigrants if Americans had to take them. I think that's true. I think if uh, people, Americans step into those jobs, there's less of a magnet for people to run across the border and take these positions. Um, I also think it's very important, this ties into the Obamacare deal, uh, when you reach a certain level of income with, with Medicaid, if let's say you're offered a job, you take that job and your Medicaid disappears, boom, and you have to decide, well, do I want to work and get zero benefits or stay on the system and, and not work but get the Medicaid? Maybe we should have a situation where it goes down a little bit. So you get a job, you make a certain level of income, and you have to pay $10 a month. You make a little more, you have to pay 20 a month. So the benefits don't vanish, but you do have to pay something, so you're participating. Right. And then you don't have that 
tr that awful dilemma where people have to yeah. decide, do I keep my medicine or do I get rid of my medicine? And that's the way it is with the overall uh, the transfer payments or, or these payments from the government, well, a combination of things. And it's so hard for a lot of people to say, I'm going to take a pay cut yeah. by taking my first job or taking a job. And also, somehow, it's got to be articulated, well, that's the first rung of the economic ladder. Once you get on there, you've got an opportunity to climb it, and soon you'll look back and at what you were getting as chump change. That's right. I mean, we have two, two metaphors here. One is a cliff. We want to turn the cliff maybe into a little more of a slide, so you slide down the cliff rather than drop off if you get up off of uh, relief onto work. And as you say, get, grab the first rung of the ladder and, and <coughs> crawl up. You know, a lot of people think, uh, oh, a job at McDonald's, how degrading. You know, as they've been running ads that we send America's best first jobs. People start off there, they move on to other things. Some people stick with, with McDonald's, become district managers, and they're making uh, some become owners. probably more money than we are. Yeah, some become owners. Hey, I worked at McDonald's when I was a teenager. Thanks a lot, Delore. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Good mm -hmm. job. Well, now back to that budget battle in Illinois. The state's